This week, we're going to keep talking about X-Array and look at how we can do latitude and longitude slices into data to reduce the amount of data that we're pulling over the network and to make our plots faster. We'll also take that data and put it on a geo-referenced plot. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to keep exploring X-Array and see how it can make us download less data. I'm actually going to make a plot of the relative humidity at the zero degree isotherm, which is something you might want to know if you're interested in icing conditions and where they're present in the atmosphere. But we're going to only want that over the continental United States. So I don't need to pull down the whole GFS. I don't need to pull down that field for the whole globe. I just need to pull down that field over that region. Now we could of course do this with the NetCDF subset service, but this is a different and a little bit more versatile way. So to get started with, we're going to very similar to last week, get Siphon, X-Ray, and MetPy imported. So from Siphon.catalog, we're gonna import the threads data server catalog import x-ray as xr. You're going to import MetPy so that we have those accessors enabled. Our best GFS address. We're going to create a catalog object on this web address. Again, we talked a little bit about where this comes from last week, and we've talked a lot about it in the past in our Siphon videos. Just know that this is the threads address for the global quarter degree best GFS collection. I'm going to go ahead and get the dataset object, which from our best GFS dot datasets is the zeroth element. So now we're ready to create our dataset object using X ray the open dataset method. We want our best dataset. And from the access URLs, do you remember what we're going to pull from last week? Yeah, the open DAP access method. So we could just go on from here and we would get everything across the globe. And then we would get our data variable and create our map. We could do that. It's going to take a little while because that's a lot of data, especially on a quarter degree GFS. So what I'm going to do now is use the dot cell method right here. I'm going to specify longitude and latitude. Now you've seen me do this with times where I would say I want the time at the index zero or a certain time. But did you know that you can do it with slices? So I'm going to use the slice object and I'm going to go 360 minus 150 just so I don't have to do this math in my head to 360 minus 50. And I'm going to go in steps of two. Similar for latitudes. 65, 20, and two. So that ran relatively quickly. Again, though, remember we haven't pulled everything across the network yet. Now I'm going to get my data variable. I'm going to use the parse cf method from MetPy. And then my variable name, relative humidity zero deg c isotherm. If we look at our data variable, we see it's lat, lon, time, there's a ref time, and then we have our MetPy coordinate reference system. So now we're ready to make a plot. Last week, we just made a simple plot using like an NIM show command. We didn't really do any coordinates or anything that was projected. This week, we're going to do, a, well, we had a projection, but it was plat curie. This week, the projection is still going to be plat curie, but we're going to use the CRS that MetPy has parsed out for us. And we're going to be able to add some things a little easier, and then it makes it nicer to roll on into 
future MetPy Mondays where we're going to put different types of projections and variables on. So I'm going to create my figure for fig size. I'm going to do 14 by 10 in this case. I'm going to add a subplot, one row, one column, first subplot. The projection, I'm going to use my data var dot metpy dot cartapy crs. Now I'm first going to do a contour F for a filled contour. I'm going to use my datavar dot lawn for X, datavar dot lat for Y, datavar dot I cell time equals zero for index select or give me the first time step. And levels, let's go with a range from 0 to 110 and steps of 20. Go ahead and put our coastlines on. Make the coastlines black. The resolution will go 1 to 10 million. I'm going to use the add features, or add feature, C feature, dot states, with scale, 1 to 50 million. Okay, so we need to have a couple of imports before this will work. So I'm going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. And this is one thing I like to do a lot is write my code block and then go back and put my imports in after I know what I'm going to need. Import numpy as mp. Import cartapy dot feature as c feature. And of course our matplotlib inline magic. So now let's give this a shot. So what we've got here is that the dimension time does not exist. This is again one of those oddities that you'll run into sometimes with the, the way the Threads data server handles the data that are coming in. Right now it's going to be called time one. If you're following along, it might be called time again, or it might be time two. So there we have a map. We can see that we've got lower humidities at the freezing level down here in the south currently, and higher up in the north, because this is the default Viridis color map. I want to make this a little bit fancier looking plot. So I'm going to save a handle as CF for contour filled. Then actually we're just going to copy this line for the contour filled and paste it. I'm going to get rid of the F so it's just a contour. So we're going to leave all the data the same. The colors we're going to set to just be white instead of colored contours and then the levels we can change I'll leave the contours at 20 but I'm going to change the shading to be let's say between 0 and 100 we just need to go a little bit over so we get 100 in the steps of 5 and for the color map we'll use something like Inferno a perceptually uniform color map so let's try that out. Okay, so now we get, again, pretty nice contrast with more filled color contours than we have the outlines. Makes it a little easier to, to read and see what's going on here. And I think I want to put a color bar on lastly. So I'm going to use plt.colorbar, the handle to our filled contours, and the orientation. I always like these horizontal. So there we go. Now we can see the lower and higher relative humidities at the freezing level over the continental United States, and we didn't have to pull all the data from the GFS back. In fact, with just one, two, three, four lines of code, we subset and got exactly what we wanted. And then with another six or seven lines of code, we were able to make this plot. 
I hope that you found this useful and that you're enjoying MetPy 1.0 and all of the integrations with X-Array. Please let us know if you have suggestions for future MetPy Mondays or things that you'd like to see down below in the comments. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.